Here we are in week six, and you guys are doing so good. The first five weeks, we're really getting you through the shooting and building of a portfolio. And then, of course, this week or last week, we created the folio critique so that you could gauge where you're at. Now, this is about post-production. So before we take you into marketing, designing, business, shooting, selling, and all the ways to make money with your brand, we really need to lock down your post-production. We are currently filming a startup Lightroom series for you. Now, I do not use Lightroom, so we have brought in a wonderful instructor to help teach you your workflow and how to do all of your basic retouching in Lightroom. Why does she not use Lightroom? Uh, Photoshop was invented long before Lightroom and when by the time they bought Lightroom in as a feature for photographers I did not need it because my workflow was already locked down through Photoshop and RAW. I do all of my editing on Photoshop and I prepare all of my images on RAW. So why don't I use Lightroom? Originally, I watched all of my wedding photographer and event photography friends create workflow through Lightroom and it handles large scale editing and production really well. However, mostly I was shooting under 120 images for a shoot, so I had a smaller workflow and I simply stayed with what I knew. A lot of photographers that are learning now in these modern times are going into Lightroom and not learning Photoshop. So we want to be able to cover all of our avenues. This week, I'm going to take you back through the basics of Photoshop. And for those of you that use only Lightroom, you might have to wait a little bit longer for the Lightroom production videos, but don't worry, they are coming. You can still learn really great basic editing through Photoshop. There are so many great Photoshop videos on our catalog already. So what I've done is I've broken them down, listed them out into searchable, easy to see, easy to use videos so that you can look at what you truly need and go back to basics. This week, I have added the gradient background correction. So when we did the lighting video, I was shooting Jane into the backlight window and you could see the windowsill and you can see where it cut off right by her head and face. So I've created a video showing you the best hack on how to select the highlight, the lower light from the background of the window and the white wall, creating a layer and then a gradient to smooth out that cut line so that you don't have a hard horizontal line in your images. Going back to Photoshop, if I was to break down Photoshop into the most basic use, I really use clone on the skin, healing tool on freckles, scars, dots, stray hairs, and simple things like that, and healing tool on the background, clone on the background. Those are the two skin retouching tools I use most. I also dodge and burn the eyes. You can watch the dodge and burn video. And of course, my absolute favorite body contouring tool on Photoshop is the warp tool. So when you warp, you can select any area and there's lots of warping for you to learn around curvy bodies, little muffin tops, warping hands to warping entire halves of images. The warp tool is so advanced because whatever you select, you can warp, but you're selecting a layer on top of the image and moving pixels. And then you feather the edge with the erase tool, meaning you're not moving too many pixels. A lot of people ask me why I don't use Liquify. I believe the warp tool is faster and it's more accurate and it bends less pixels because when you use Liquify, you're not creating a layer on top, you're bending the pixels in the image and when you bend pixels, they are noticeable. So you don't want to bend too many. I also use cut and paste a lot and I want to show you how I use it to warp and fix backgrounds and change V flat tones. There is so much to learn here, but we're going to start at the basics and move through in both Photoshop and Lightroom. Your biggest challenge this week is to watch the two minute edit. Why do we edit two minutes? Let me tell you. 
You need to make money in your business and spending an hour on each image is not going to help you. Yes, we want to get it right in camera. We want to get it right straight away so we don't have to spend hours editing. For a lot of people, editing is a big headache and it is one of the parts of business that people really struggle with, a lot like some people struggle with marketing and selling. Photoshop was never a problem for me because I was a retoucher before I was a photographer. If you are struggling with Photoshop, you need to look to myself and the mentors who started to price and sell our work in a way that Photoshop can be outsourced by someone else. We have lots of contacts to help you do that. But one of the best things you can do even before you get brave enough and successful enough to outsource your retouching is to still learn the absolute basics so that you can talk any retoucher through this process. One of the best things I did in my career was I taught all of my makeup artists how to retouch and then I employed them full time. So when they weren't doing hair and makeup and assisting me, they were retouching the images straight after the shoot was done. I ended up employing uh, girls for $15 to $20 an hour. So for the price of a contract hair and makeup artist, usually a day rate of $150, I ended up getting a full-time staff member that could assist me, do hair and makeup, and then retouch the shoot that day, ready for sale within the next week. Because that is one of the important things when you are turning over work for sale, and that is the ability to finish what you need to finish in time, turn over your product while your client is excited and ready to buy. There is so much to talk about this week. Stay in the group, ask lots of questions, check out that two minute retouch. Um, when it comes to doing the reveal wall, it's really a five to seven minute retouch. And when you're talking 20 images or 25 images, add up that time. Everybody in this segment will be at a different level. Some of you have never opened Photoshop before. Some of you are so confused. Some of you are just spending too much time. Some of you are resisting it. And yes, some of you are hiding behind Photoshop. And that means you're taking your images, you're spending hours and hours retouching them, and you're avoiding doing the things that you really need to do, like getting out there, meeting people, booking, and selling your photography. And you hide behind Photoshop because it's safe. I did this for many years. I'm so onto you right now. Yes, I'm looking right at you, and you know that I know, okay? So this is a wake up call. I want you to pull back on the retouching. I want you to be okay with what is good and I need you to be okay with what is acceptable. I need you to warp responsibly. I need you to fix, edit, little, just little embellishments, okay, that make people wanna buy their images. If we need to trim a little muffin top or a little arm, we do that because our clients love it and they don't know. And always go back to good lighting and good posing fundamentals and good camera basics because that will save you hours at the other end. This is a segment that is very dear to my heart, but as your mentor, I also know that there are thousands of people at different levels, so I'm going to do my best to provide a solid start-up education on Photoshop and Lightroom that is gonna help you get to the next level. Good luck this week, I'm here for you, let's talk about it in the group, go for it, watch these videos and check out the workbook and the map that I've set for you because there is a huge amount of information at your fingertips right now.